You're listening to the official podcast of Asbury University, produced by students with God-honoring conversations that inform, edify, and encourage. This is Asbury. We explore culture and current topics through a Christian worldview, promoting a well-balanced life, and we empower our community to belong, become, and be set apart. I'm your host, Abby Lobb. Welcome to This is Asbury. So I am joined in the studio today with Dr. Mike Ross. Welcome, <laughs> Dr. Ross. Uh, thank you, Abby. This is great. You're a newly minted PhD. I, I am. Yes, I congratulations. Am. Thank you. I'm still got a couple of battle scars I'm getting <laughs> you over. Do. So, yeah. You do. But I'm very thankful. How many thankful. new wrinkles did you earn in that process, right? I don't know. I lost like another couple of hairs, but I, and I don't have many to lose, so I mean, it's kind of dangerous. But. Uh, well, congratulations. Tell Thank us you. what you do here at Asbury. Give me a you know snippet of your background. Yeah, that's great. So uh, it's interesting. This is sort of a second career for mm-hmm. me. I spent 30 years in industry, and I just feel like God called me into higher ed full-time. Mm-hmm. Uh, I teach marketing and data analytics, mm-hmm. and uh, I try to make data analytics fun. Ooh. I'm not sure everybody agrees with that, but <laughs> I think it's very interesting. So, I, uh, Also, I'm the newly minted director of our mentor program. Wonderful. Yeah, in the Dayton yeah. School of Business. Tell us about yes. that program a little bit. Yeah, it's a great program, Uh, just kind of at the highest level. uh, One of the things that we do know, and I think back into my own uh, professional life, uh, the mentors who were so important to me. In fact, uh, when I accepted the job, I made a list. There's like 12 people that I would not be the person that I am Mm. without those. And uh, so we really what we want to do is we want to help our students have those important people in their lives so that they can help them not only professionally but spiritually, uh, coaching, life coaching, support, prayer support kind of stuff. I heard an expression one time, I think like in business specifically, a lot of people assume, and you know, sometimes this would be a correct assumption, but a lot of times people assume that money and capital is more important than mentorship, but oftentimes it's the opposite. Is that, would you agree with that? Yeah, uh, what a great statement. Yeah, it's it's interesting um, uh, being here, going on my ninth year. I think I had to sort of, sort of get my head around that mm. because um, going to school in a in a secular university, everything's about maximizing profit. Right. That's it. That's mm. number one, bottom line. That's mm. it. Uh, however, um, obviously, from a Christian worldview, mm-hmm. it's, you know, all this stuff in the world is going to be burned up. Yeah, It's mm-hmm. all about mm-hmm. Jesus and do we have a relationship with him and our relationships are eternal. Yeah. And so I think all that being said, the mentorship to me is really about showing um, young people, you know, about the profession and how mm-hmm. to do it well, uh, excellence, however... Uh, you know, ultimately, certainly from our standpoint, it's about um, uh, growing in your relationship with, with Christ. Yeah. Well, you so. guys do such a great job at that in the Dayton School of Business. That's, you know, be the best for the world. And everything related to what you're saying just kind of baked in. You know, you even have a class. What's that class called? Um, uh, God, Faith, and Marketplace. Yes, there's yeah. that one. And then there's Give, Save, Spend. There's a few of them that really help students put all of this really into context and Absolutely. What the hierarchy should be in their life. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And and it, it's, you know, for all of us um, in the Dayton School of Business, we all worked in industry. Mm-hmm. And uh, so in some ways, I think we've sort of had to unwind, mm-hmm. un- sort of like my golf game, which is non-existent. <laughs> <laughs> Spend all this time trying to unlearn horrible golf habits and <laughs> then, like, learn the real ones so, or learn the good yeah. ones. So. Well, you all saw the people who did, like you said, get the priority wrong and make it all about the bottom line, and what did that lead to, you know? like <laughs> Yeah, you can definitely mess up your life yeah, with abs- your priorities wrong. Absolutely. Yeah. Well, speaking of your students and mentorship, um, since you're leading this program, uh, what are some of the ways that you go about finding these opportunities for students, whether it's internships or mentorships? What's What's that like? Yeah, so it's it's interesting uh, being sort of the newly minted 
mm-hmm. uh, director. Um, we, we had uh, someone who was in that role, did a great job, uh, but just trying to take it to the next level. Mm-hmm. In terms of trying to help students, I, I think a couple of things. One, we have to um, sort of build our uh, database is pretty <laughs> impersonal way. But build contacts both in the professional world Mm -hmm. as well as uh, invite students to want to have a mentor. Yeah. I was uh, doing a little – Understand why they should have one. Is that what you're saying? Exactly. Why should they have one? It was interesting. I was reading a recent article in Harvard Business Review. It's sort of ironic. Uh, According to this article, uh, the students that need a mentor the most mm. are the ones that are most reluctant to mm. get a mentor. Yeah. And then the kids, the the students that that sign up and say, hey, I want a mentor, like, you're probably okay. You're doing great. <laughs> you're yeah. doing good. <laughs> so I think the challenge is to get the students that feel like I don't have my stuff together, so yeah. I, you know – they feel like they need to be ready in order to have it. It's like, well, that's kind of the point of having it is to help yes. you get yourself better prepared. Absolutely. <laughs> yeah. So we've got uh, sort of what I would call an awareness campaign going yeah. on among the uh, students on campus. We're actually going to be at Activities Fair uh, this afternoon, kind of build that awareness. Uh, we're inviting students to uh, kind of put their name in the ring, so to speak. And is this for students in all of Asbury, or is this specifically business? This oriented? is, yeah, this is uh, specifically for business yeah. at this okay. point. But then, uh, who knows? Maybe they'll let me into like biology. There well, you go. <laughs> actually, probably better not. Maybe, <laughs> maybe not. Maybe scratch that. <laughs> Biotech uh, <laughs> business or something. <laughs> oh, no, they might be like, okay, get this guy out Step of here. Step away from the labs. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Please. <laughs> Yeah, I've got a couple stories on labs, but I'll tell you on another <laughs> podcast. But. So what are some of the tips that you that you do give to students who are, like, really on this track and looking for a mentor or an internship, internship for that matter? Yeah, uh, I think, you know, number one, just let me know. Express mm-hmm. interest. Um, I mentioned before I spent 30 years in uh, industry, and, and so uh, this is sort of my second chapter, mm-hmm. if you will. So I have 4,500 of my best friends on LinkedIn. That's so, right. And, and you sort of <laughs> guffaw at that. But the reality is I am connected with a lot of people. I know a lot of people. Mm-hmm. Um, so just kind of let me know, right? Yeah. Um, the second thing is we obviously have a great alumni mm-hmm. uh, 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 core. And so most of them, you know, they're more than willing to help at yeah. whatever level they can. Um I was actually uh, talking with our GA, Celia Pelfrey, which uh, probably many of you know, and she and I have been sort of brainstorming how to take the mentorship program up to the next level. And she sort of used this uh, euphemism of like speed dating, although we probably Ah, will. But the idea is, you know, pulling together potential mentors, potential mentees, Mm -hmm. and kind of trying to figure out, you know, is there a match? Is Mm -hmm. there chemistry there where... Uh, we want to have mentors and mentees to be, uh, you know, we really want to invest in each other. Because I think one of the dangers, uh, probably f- more for mentors, because they're, you know, very busy with life, kids, spouses, yeah. whatever, mm-hmm. is, um, you know, hey, this is a commitment. This isn't like coffee once every three months. It's like mm-hmm. I really want to invest in this student. And, yeah. uh, and then I think for students, there's a fear of getting over – Oh, I, they're going to think i am not got my stuff together. It's like, <laughs> yeah. that's okay. That's yeah. the point. Yeah. So. Did any of us when we were that age? Uh, I no. I don't think I, <laughs> I – for me, it's definitely answer no for me. And then even now as an older dude, not so much either. <laughs> Maybe marginally better. Well, and honestly, <laughs> I think some of the students I talk to, even, even just that simple fact is part of the growing process. Like they just assume that I'm going to graduate and I'm going to get this job and it's all just kind of – fall into line and it's right. we all know it is not because mm-hmm. life is so unpredictable so i think even just learning how to deal with that reality is so beneficial for yeah. students i think so and i i just wanted to add i think one of the things that is super helpful and uh, i want to coach our mentors and hopefully most of them know this um, is to not pretend that you have right. everything together, yes. right? Because uh, young people want to see, hey, uh, wow, you weren't perfect all the yeah. time, 
Yeah, yeah. realistic expectations. Well, thank you for leading that program. I'm excited to see what comes of that. So here at Asbury, you know, we we abide by the Wesley and Holiness tradition and the kind of this framework of doing life and work and business. How how does viewing marketing through this lens kind of change our understanding of of the discipline itself? Yeah, it's an excellent question. So over the past few months, I've been looking at that uh, at that question, and um, you know, marketing uh, sort of at the highest level, people sometimes feel like it. Uh, there's a negative mm-hmm. connotation, like, mm-hmm. okay, this is some smooth talking person that's going to talk me into something that I don't really need. Yeah, you know, and and there's a, probably a fair amount of you know cynicism, mm-hmm. which is probably justified. Yeah, some, sometimes some it is. is. Yes. <laughs> um, but, you know, looking at marketing through the Wesley and Holiness uh, uh, viewpoint, um, what what I see both not only in the marketing discipline itself, but, but also uh, looking at it through the Wesleyan lens is that what we really want is we want marketing to be less transactional mm-hmm. and more relational. Mm-hmm. Right, and so the idea is marketing isn't necessarily the end sort of justifies the means. It's more about really looking into someone's heart mm-hmm. and mind and what do they really need. Yeah, and uh, w- what I sort of <laughs> discovered through all of that, looking at it through the Wesley and Holiness uh, uh, perspective, is that uh, marketing. Uh, I think it has sort of an ethical duty because uh, at some level, right, people are trusting us yeah. to give them recommendations mm-hmm. and advice. And that's a powerful position. And so what we don't want to do is we don't want to abuse that. We never want that to be something that is not done for God's glory to, to manipulate someone. And so um, what was pretty cool is doing that research that the marketing discipline itself is moving more and more over the last 30, 40, 50 years to being much more relational, which yeah. probably sounds funny because it's kind of like, okay, I thought it was about people. And, <laughs> right. But, but it, it's, it's very much more around the relationship, building relationships, uh, collaboration. And, and as I look at Wesleyan uh, theology, uh, he was very much about the fact that uh, – uh, living the Christian life is is all about relationships. Mm-hmm. It's in relation uh, to one another, and obviously, Paul in the New Testament talks about we're all members of Christ's body. Mm-hmm. So it's so to me, it it really was sort of a cool discovery for me to see mm-hmm. sort of the synthesis of yeah. the discipline. And this is pretty cool. This actually aligns really well with our value system here in our belief system. Yeah. So. What do you think is, has driven that change in marketing strategies that you mentioned? Do you think it's purely just competition and cutting through the noise, or do you think it's more than that? Um, you know, I think, um, wow, that's such a great question. <laughs> um, I think, to me, we have the ability now, you know, primarily with, with technology, mm-hmm. to be able to bring buyers and sellers cl- more closely together um, you know, for example, um, in the supply chain world, uh, sometimes if you are a supplier, uh, your customer might want to have access to what you've got in the pipeline. Mm-hmm. And what that does is it forces a conversation between the buyer and the seller saying, hey, I really need this product like two weeks earlier than it looks like I can be able to get it mm-hmm. to me. Okay, can you help me out here? Right. Um, so I think it's um, – in some ways, the technology yeah. is helping us to um, to become more human yeah. and human interaction rather than um, looking at a screen and you're not a person, you're just a number and a name. So. Still about the human interaction. Well, that leads perfectly to my next question because you recently wrote an article about AI, so non-human <laughs> things. Um, you know, talked about AI marketing and expanding the kingdom of God. Before we get to, into the faith aspects of that, how do you feel about AI and marketing? Yeah, <laughs> loaded question. <laughs> yeah, well, you know, it's interesting. Um, I'm old enough to remember back in the early and mid '90s when. The thing called the internet was a thing. <laughs> and, you know, our students are like, hey, I came out of the womb knowing mm-hmm, about the internet. Right. But, 
But I remember back in the day that the Internet was a thing. We knew it was an important thing, but we really had no idea how that would uh, manifest itself mm-hmm. in the business world. And I feel like AI in some ways is like that. Oh, yeah. Um, mm-hmm. You know, uh, whether you're you know an individual, an organization, a business, you're looking at AI and you're saying, I know I got to manage to this, but I don't right. really know where it's going to go. Right. And so I'm – going to be sort of, uh, you know, feeling around in the in the dark, so to speak. Yeah, but then you so. might get left behind if you don't because, you know, if you look at companies that were early adapters to, you know, online retail or whatever, it's like, yeah, well, yeah they got to jump on the game. Yeah. So the, right. in terms of the faith aspect of it, how, how does this all work? What What's this article about? Yeah, so uh, the article, what, what's interesting, I sort of alluded to this a little bit before, the discipline is moving away from what I would say transactional to more – Relational and some of the academic literature is very, very, very interesting uh, to try to address this question around what do we do with AI and marketing. And what some of the early research has found is that um, there are some aspects of a marketing quote relationship that could be sort of automated. Mm. And so, uh, depending upon a number of factors, uh, the industry, the personality, um, the level of trust between a buyer and seller, some of those aspects could be uh, automated through yeah. AI. So uh, the idea is that the marketing person can be sort of freed up mm-hmm. to really be focused on the needs of the human being yeah. who's the buyer rather than, you know, hey, I forgot to put your account number in right, right. or whatever. Like, oh, my gosh, <laughs> please just stop. So so it's it's really the goal, I think, is to try to free up um, sort of mental bandwidth yeah, so that absolutely. people can get really locked into what people need. Definitely. Well, I will take that in my department. <laughs> I run the marketing department here. Let's do it. Let's, Let's go. do it. <laughs> yeah, no kidding. No or kidding. it's like, you know, all my mom friends, you know, we all have young kids and we're like, is there AI that can do the laundry so that we can be freed up to go do these things with our kids or with our spouse or whatever? Yeah. yeah. Um, I think the opportunities are uh, what we were just talking about before. Mm-hmm. How can we uh, use AI? How can we use disruptive technology to allow the human interaction to flourish rather than degrade uh, because, you know, we're, we're getting irritated with stuff that is not relational. Yeah. Um, but in terms of the challenges, I think what's going to be interesting, and I hope that both academia and industry or practitioners can really partner on this, is that uh, where we see those opportunities, they're going to vary by, as I was talking about a little bit before, uh, levels of trust. Mm. Uh, where are you in the sort of the life cycle of the relationship, mm-hmm. uh, the type of transaction, and the sort of what are the social norms or expectations? And so, uh, for example, I was looking at uh, a study looking at AI in the banking industry. Mm. And what was interesting, uh, you know, most of us have gone to an ATM. It's like, yeah, please, I don't want to have to talk to a person. I can right. just like go to a machine <laughs> and like get 40 bucks out or whatever. Uh, but in the study, it was very interesting. It, depending upon, um, you know, the type of transaction and the type of person, uh, some people are like, man, I don't really don't want to talk to a person. If I can mm-hmm. just like do this, like I think about my son. Right? right? He's like, okay, can I just like do everything online? Yeah. I'm going to talk to somebody. Other people are like, oh, my gosh, this is my money. Okay, mm-hmm. I want to talk to a human being, look them in the eye kind of stuff. Yeah. And so I think the challenges are, uh, are, there op- or are there ways that we can sort of in advance help um, different industries, different organizations to say, hey, if you want to improve your customer satisfaction, um, you know, here's some ways to do it. And you can sort of do it at the individual level, mm-hmm. right? So if, if Abby Law walks in and, and we know enough about you at, you know, whatever bank it is, wherever right. you bank, like, okay, Abby's great. She don't want to talk to a machine. She right. wants to talk to a if human. I, if I call you and I just press zero <laughs> enough times till I finally get to a human, that's what I'm doing. <laughs> oh, wow. That's your strategy, That's my too. strategy. It usually works. That's what I, that you can just blitz right through the phone tree. Zero, 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 zero. <laughs> finally, like, okay, transferring you yeah. to the operator. <laughs> that's the goal. 
<laughs> I mean, I love that, right? Because, I mean, you know, th- that's sort of what we were talking about before. It's depending on the situation of the person. Yeah, exactly. You know, if you're trying to talk to an airline, you need to get a yeah. seat, you know, on a flight. It's like, hey, man, I'm not doing this machine. No. I just no. need, like, a person get me on. Look me in know. the eyes and say, here's your seat, <laughs> yeah, right? right. <laughs> Give me a sense of confidence that it might actually happen in the real world. Exactly. So. <laughs> that's so funny. Yeah. So there's there's a lot to unpack, and as we know, this will never never stop. So how can academia contribute to the development of AI as a redemptive tool in marketing? Yeah, it's such an interesting question. Obviously, um, you know, we have to look at it uh, certainly from an Asbury perspective, mm-hmm. a Christian perspective. Um, so what I found in in uh, writing this paper is that. Uh, If, in fact, living the Christian life is all about building relationships and if there is a tool or technology that allows us to foster those relationships um, rather than just focusing on the transaction, then I think we have sort of a conduit where we have uh, marketing professionals, sales professionals who can focus their um, time, energy, and effort to winning people to the Lord. Yeah, yeah. Um, And that's sort of the hope, right? I mean, it's sort of a non-PC kind of Mm -hmm. thing to talk about in our world. Um, But I think, you know, I sort of think about it in uh, maybe warfare Mm -hmm. terms, or if we look at Ephesians 6, I mean, we're in a spiritual battle. And if you take your faith seriously and you're a marketing professional and you think that Christ is coming back pretty soon, you want to be able to get as Many people as you can right, on this side right. of eternity yeah. rather than the other side. So yeah, and so, just being grounded, you know, just being grounded in your faith, yeah. grounded in you know virtue and truth and honesty, you know, yes. Um, yes. is just going to be more important than ever, maybe you know, potentially oh, <laughs> with I agree. all these changes. <laughs> I totally agree. Yeah, well, and all that leads back to mentorship, right? Yes. To yeah. Seeing this modeled for you. So, anything yes. in closing that you want to talk about there? Yeah, so it's interesting. I am. Uh, you got some books with you. I do. I got some <laughs> books. So this is uh, only a, you know, an academic would would do something like this. But I was first. I was. I wanted to see. You know, I know what a mentor is, but where the heck did that term come from? So I was doing a little bit of research, and I found that at least where it seems to have uh, uh, emerged initially was from Homer's The Odyssey. Mm. And that was, I think, scholars think that came from. It was written in somewhere around the seventh seventh century BC, mm-hmm. so many, many thousands of years right. ago. But what's interesting is a uh, uh, mentor is a character, uh, and Odysseus uh, is is uh, going on this journey, hence the Odyssey. And so Odysseus um, sort of uh, brings in his friend, trusted advisor, called Mentor, to okay, basically. Yeah watch over his family and his household. And so there's some pretty cool uh, yeah. grounding in like a mentor. You know, as we were talking about before, if you're a mentor, it's not just, hey, check the box and move on. It's like it's sort of, a, you know, an honor and mm-hmm. and a, a responsibility. Mm-hmm. If someone entrusts their future and, um, you know, the, the, the way that they're going to live their life, that um, that that's something to not be taken lightly. So I was yeah. like, well, that's pretty cool. That <laughs> so is very cool. <laughs> pretty cool. Yeah. And then Love the other, it. yeah. And the, the other one of the other books. Um, when I think about, uh, I was in my early twenties, and you know, just trying to figure out what the heck was God going to do in my life, <laughs> and I was as confused as as ever. Um, a, a book was introduced to me called "See You at the Top" by Zig Ziglar, and some people may have heard of Zig Ziglar. He's a very uh, famous salesperson, um, and you can do some research on that. He was from Yazoo, Mississippi. Hmm. I don't <laughs> Did think I do that? that. That's yeah, cool. yeah. So a really little tiny town, but but where he really kind of came to uh, fame is that he became a very much a, a, a great motivational speaker. And the book "See You at the Top" basically helps you understand how to be successful in life. And it's not, uh, as a uh, Ziegler is a very strong believer in Christ, so when he says successful, it's not just money. It's yeah. your life, your relationships, your family, um, you know, as you said, virtue and honor and integrity. 
And so um, I just uh, I, I want to uh, – I wouldn't necessarily require that all my mentees read that. Yeah, I, I don't necessarily think that they might read uh-huh. like a 300-page book. But I try to inculcate some of the ideas around attitude. He talks a lot mm-hmm. about attitude. And um, so – um, you know, between sort of understanding, okay, where's the idea of a mentor come from? And it's pretty cool to kind of understand what the original intention was. And then, you know, fast forward a few thousand years later, we've got this guy, Zig Ziglar, Christian C at the top. And so to me, it, it's, um, you know, whatever chapter I'm in in my life, yeah. I feel like this last sort of work chapter, how can I, you know, help uh, invest in yeah. our students to be able to help them? Who are some, who, yeah, who were some of the mentors that you had that that impacted you over the years? Oh wow! Okay. You don't have to name them necessarily. No, but, you I'm, know what were those yeah, experiences? I'm going to get emotional now. Oh, okay. No. no, I mean, <laughs> no. I think about um, you know, I think about my dad. You know, mm-hmm. certainly things he taught me about work and life. Uh, he's a, a mathematician, mm-hmm. so. Um, that's where I probably get my love for that. Mm-hmm. Um, data marketing. Yeah, data marketing. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. I'm not sure everybody else loves it. Um, uh, my father-in-law, very mm-hmm. much a um, uh, really kind of operationalized and lived out the uh, the mission of the Dayton School of Business, even though it was way before the Dayton School of Business. Yeah. Uh, he uh, was a very successful businessman, but the – but his business was simply a platform to reach people for Christ, mm. and so that was that was great. Um, think about my grandparents teaching me about hard work and integrity and honor. Um, my uh, maternal grandfather taught me how to fish. Oh, nice! So that was really cool. Um, and uh, I don't get to fish as much as I'd like to, but he was really neat. So, and then you know, professionally, lots of really cool people mm. that showed me some. You know, amazing stuff, really good bosses, good managers, a uh, couple of great mentors here at Asbury. So, yeah. so uh, you know, it, when I took this role, I, I thought about, man, I, how do you kind of pay this forward? Because I had some pretty neat people invest in me, and I want to be able to keep that moving, and for obviously for other people. So. Yeah, definitely. So in closing, if you're a student, seek a mentor. If you're someone who is, you know, of the place in life where you can start giving back, definitely do it, right? Absolutely. Yeah, get involved. Call Mike Ross. (laughs) (laughs) That's it. Yeah, give me a call. Send me an email. Add him on LinkedIn. You'll be 4,501, right? (laughs) Totally. All of my best friends hang out there. That's right. (laughs) Thank you so much for your time. I really appreciate you coming in today. This is great, important stuff to talk about, and I hope that people get a chance to do something with it. Okay, so. that's great. Thank you, Abby. Thanks for the opportunity. Well, thank you so much for joining us for this episode of This is Asbury. To learn more about Asbury University, visit asbury.edu. Mm-hmm.